personal finance practice problem using Excel. Savings from insurance discount calculation. Get ready to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to the Excel worksheet, that's okay because we'll basically build this from scratch. If you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice, and blank. The example basically being an answer key. Let's take a look at it now. We've got the information on the left-hand side. We are imagining that we have insurance coverage and if we have a group coverage, we get a discount and we want to do some calculations using our time value of money to consider the value you of the discount obviously in every section we want to be putting in our time value of money calculations which we will practice here the second tab the practice tab will have the pre-formatted worksheets so you can work through the practice problem with less excel formatting the third tab the blank tab will have in essence a blank sheet where we can work on the excel formatting more so if you don't have this tab then you might just start a, a blank sheet i would select the whole sheet first right click on it format the cells for the baseline underline formatting which for me is typically currency bracketed no dollar sign no decimals and then you change them as you go i'm just going to x out of this because i already have the worksheet set up and then i'd put the data on the left hand side which is good practice because you want to be drawing your information from the data on the left formatting the cells such as percentages in the format that would be appropriate for that cell make a skinny c column and then we're ready to go so we've got a and b considering insuring their cars with the same company in exchange for a discount so we're imagining we've got these two people that have different uh, insurance companies and if they insure together then they could get a discount so what's going to be the value of the discount is what we'll try to think about so they currently pay we're going to say 750 and 950 and the discount they're going to get is 15 percent if they combine together so then once we calculate the discount we can think about what the future savings are of it and whenever we think about this time value of money we're going to say we got the interest rates what if we were to save that amount for 10 years how much would we have after 10 years but we also want to think about what would happen if i was to discount it back for example in other words i want to be on the position of both I'm going to argue the best case scenario in terms of I'm trying to argue for basically uh, taking the discount and then kind of the worst case scenario, which you might put together if you were in an argument situation where you're saying, well, the discount might not be worth it. So you can see both sides. And of course, when you're making an even decision, a fair decision, you want to look at things from multiple different angles whenever we're using a statistical analysis and consider the viewpoint of the person who's given us the statistical analysis to see if they might be giving us kind of one view, uh, just like when you, whenever you hear an argument with someone who might have an interest in the outcome, especially a financial one. So in any case, let's do some calculations here. So we're gonna say the savings, let's first calculate those savings. We're gonna say that the savings uh, per year calculation is the first thing we need to put together. Let's make this a header tab up top, making it black and white going to the home tab up top font group we're going to make this black and white for the headers because that's our custom that's what we do every time so this is going to be the current costs what they're currently paying the current premiums in other words for our two folk here a and b can't you come up with a name at least a and b that's so lame can't even like smith or jane or john or something i mean is it that hard? Whatever. A and B. Copied it down. That's person A and person B. And then we're going to say this equals the 750. Enter. I'm going to copy that down because I could use the relative reference. Notice we're pulling as much as we can from the data on the left hand side. That's just the good way to do things. That's how we want to set things up. We don't want to hard code the numbers if we don't have to. We want the data set over there. That's why we could adjust things that way. This is the total current costs it's in the outer column using the trusty sum function here equals to sum sum it up sum it up there it is let's do some indentations because we got it like a subcategory type of thing we did with the colon and everything so let's make an indentation for these three home tab alignment indent indent this one again home tab alignment indent that looks wonderful then let's put an underline here. That'll make it look even better. 
home tab font group and underline there we have it so now we've got the discount the discount in percentage format is going to be equal to the 15 percent notice i'm just drawing this from the data we want to be drawing from the data that is not a percent now let's make it a percent let's percentize that so percentize home tab number percentification and then font group and underline and that's going to be the savings the savings we would have from the discount so that's going to be equal to the 1007 times the 15 percent so we're going to say we're going to save like every year 255 dollars that doesn't sound like much but what if we saved it for 10 years and got a seven percent interest rate on it where would we stand after that point that's where we're going yeah you've seen it before in prior sections we got to do one of these kind of like at least one every section because we practice our time value of money let's select these items we're going to go to the home tab font group let's put up some borders around it some brackets and now again you could think of this from two perspectives you might say if i'm trying to argue and make this look as good as possible that we have to take this we could say look where we will be if we were to save that much for 10 years uh, and we were able to invest it and get a 7% rate of return. Well, we could do that calculation. I could say, okay, well, that would be that would be a future value calculation, value calculation. And let's do our trusty future value. We're gonna, and notice I got my data down here. We got the interest rate. We're gonna be able to get a 7% a year for 10 years, okay? So this is gonna be equal to, we'll say the future value, let's say negative of the future value. That'll flip the sign. And I think it's the easiest thing to do, although possibly not the most proper place to put the negative, but it's easy to do that. So I'm going to say this equals negative future value instead of equals. The rate is going to be that 7%. It's a yearly rate. That's what we're doing. So we don't need to break it down into months or anything. Comma, number of periods. We're going to say 10 years. We're going to say 10 years we're going to do this. And then comma, and we're going to have another payment because we're going to save $255 each year. And we're going to put that into the into the bank account or into like stocks and bonds maybe and earn seven percent so we're going to pick that amount up so it's an annuity not just one value in other words so we're going to say enter so we would be at three thousand five thirty two dollars or three thousand five hundred twenty three after ten years if we were able to do that but you might also make the argument you know and again that's the optimistic argument so so but you might also say well, yeah, but I mean, there are a couple factors that you can look at from, a, from another angle. You might say, well, maybe I'm not gonna put it in the savings account. You know that we're gonna spend the money in any case. And if I get $255 next year and the year after that and the year after that, then it's actually worth, it's, it's worth less. But I should be, I, you might make the argument that I should be discounting it back at the same value. Meaning if I got a stream of an annuity payments every year for 10 years, uh, it would be worth less than if I got the money today. You're talking about a future value number here. In other words, you might say, let me take the present value of this stream of payments that I'm going to discount back at the 7%. Just to do it that way, I'd say, okay, this would be negative present value shift. That would be the rate, which would be the 7%, comma. The number of periods is going to be 10, and then comma, and then we're going to say the payment now because it's still an annuity payment that we're going to get 255 and notice we'd probably get it a monthly maybe unless we pay on a yearly basis but we're going to estimate yearly so you might say really it would be saving more like uh one hundred one one thousand uh 791 and you might of course just do the the most straightforward calculation if i pull these down and I, and I say, what if I save that for 10 years? Saving over, say over years of 10, we would have uh, savings, sa savings for 10 years would be equal to the 255 times 10. That would be with no time value of money calculation. So let's put an underline there. Let's put some some brackets in blue. So you could say, okay, that would be what I would save over 10 years. But on the optimistic side, you'd be like, well, I wouldn't be at 2055. We would be investing that and we'd get a 7% return. So we'd have a future value of the 3,523, but that's a future value. And we're currently in the present. 
And you might say, well, yeah, really what's happening is I'm going to spend that money and I should be discounting it back at the discount rate, let's say, and that would bring us back to the 1,791. Or you might say, well, really, I think I'm going to spend the money and I'm not going to get the 7% return. And I think inflation is 3.5%. So you're going to say, well, if inflation is 3.5%, then I could discount it back using the present value using the inflation rate. And you also might argue that obviously if inflation happens, you're not going to have the same, the insurance company might up their premiums from year to year. It's not like we have a contract for 10 years and they're not going to increase their insurance prices because if it, with inflation, you would think they would increase their insurance prices and so on. But let's say they kept it static and then we got, we have these savings over the 10 years and let's discount it with the insurance, cal with the inflation calculation. So we're going to say this is present value for inflation. So you're going to say, okay, this is negative present value shift nine. The rate is now going to be the, the 3.5 because we think the inflation rate is going to be 3.5, let's say, comma, the number of periods is going to be 10, comma, and we're going to take the savings, which was the 255 uh, per year. So we'd come up to like 2,121. So, so it kind of depends where you're, where you're coming from with the argument. So just note when someone talks about future value, you're talking about future value terms and they're making some assumptions in what you're going to do. And then of course, you're talking about money that's in future terms instead of the present term. Uh, and then you, you might take the annuity and say, well, I'm going to discount it back to present value. You might try to uh, remove the, the time value of money calculation in your, in your argument. But the, the point is you want to look at these kind of things with different from different angles so that you get a, a fuller picture of what's going on for your decision making process. And this, this same concept applies when you go to more complex decisions and people are arguing one particular thing or another, just like when they argue with words, right? They're going to give you an argument that only has one side to something doesn't mean they're lying per se, although they may be, but <laughs> it doesn't mean they're lying. Maybe they got a legit statistic there or the, a legit argument, but it's only one side that happens to be the most favorable side. So we see that in our, the same thing happens with numbers. So in any case, let's try to, let's try to then say, let's, let's map this one out. Let's map this first one out. I'm going to make this a skinny G. Let's copy the skinny C. I'm going to copy the skinny C format and then put that over here and let's do like let's do uh, 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 a mapping out of this information so I'm gonna say years let's say the growth and the savings and then the value is going to be here so we can map out this kind of annuity that we got to we're going to get to this number and then we'll actually discount it back to this number just to see how these present value calculations and future values time value money calculations fit together so I'm going to select these three. Let's do our, our centering, alignment, and center. Let's make it black and white. We're going to go font group. Let's make it black and white. Let's make the year a little bit skinnier. I'm going to skinnerize it. So we're skinnerizing it. You can fatten the, the cell and skinnerize the cells. So this is going to be your one, two, three. And let's copy those three or just select them. Use our fill handle to drag that series on down to 10, 10, 10. Then we're gonna then, I'm gonna go to the alignment and uh, center these ones. And I'm gonna say the first savings happened in year one and with a normal annuity, we start at like the end of the year. So we don't have any any earnings on it in year one. It's just gonna be the savings of the 255. So I'm gonna say that's the value then at the end. Then we're going to say growth happened on that 255 of 7%. And this is, we're going to get up to that three, uh, three, five, two, uh, three, seven here. So we're going to say, all right, we got that 255 times the 7% and enter. So there's the 18, the savings. We got the same savings, which was that 255. I'm going to do some absolute references shortly and copy it down, but let's just do a couple of these to get a feel for it. So there it is, and we're gonna say this is equal to the prior value plus the growth plus the savings. These are rounded numbers, so there could be some pennies involved here. Now we've got the growth again, which is on this number, which we're gonna earn 7% on. So we're gonna say the five 
28 times the 7 percent there it is we put in another 255 so now we have equals the prior value plus the growth plus the savings and let's do it one more time and then we'll do absolute references and copy it down now we've got the 820 times the seven percent there's the growth tab the savings we're going to put another we saved another uh, 255 and this equals the prior balance let's do it this way this time plus the sum of these two items the growth and the savings close up the brackets there it is okay let's see I'm gonna delete these two now I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to make this as fast as possible I'm gonna try to do some absolute references so if I double click on this one this one is in my table so I'm, I don't need an absolute reference but this one is in like our data set or it's outside of the table that I'm in and I want it to be the same when I copy it down so that's gonna be in kit in uh, that's the one that I drew in here which is in B12 actually b12 right there b12 we're going to say f4 b12 you only need a mixed reference but an absolute works dollar sign before the b and the 12. so this one is coming from something outside of the current table i'm in and therefore i want to make it an absolute reference f4 so dollar sign before the f and seven so when i copy it down it'll stay the same you only need a mixed reference but an absolute works this one doesn't need anything happening to it even though it's complex looking because these three cells are inside the table going to select these three tabs and i could just double click the fill handle which i can then call a fill button i just call it a fill button at that point there it is there's the three five uh two three I can select these let's make that blue and bordered blue and bordered so now you can see how this kind of growth happens to see how we got to that number and just to tie this out let's let's say well this is a future value now just to see how it kind of ties out with the present value what if i was to take that future value which is 10 years from now that's how much we would have in 10 years and i was to discount it back with the present value of one calculation using that same seven percent right so i could say okay well what if i took what if i took the present value of that number so i'm going to say this is going to be negative present value to get it back to today's dollars i'm going to say the rate i'm going to use that same rate the seven percent comma number of periods is going to be let's say 10 right there to get it back to today and then comma and then i'm not going to have a payment here because it's not an annuity I'm just going to present value of one so two commas or you could put a zero there and then the future value which is that's where we would be in 10 years is that number close up the brackets that brings us back to the 1791 which we calculated when we did this this present value calculation in the annuity calculation just so you can kind of see how those numbers tie together so let's put some blue and border around this one I'm going to font group blue and border it and for some reason I put it down here in row four so I'm going to actually delete these cells above it to move it up so I'm going to I did that on purpose so like we could do this right that's why I did it so I'm going to go from H1 to uh, K3 I'm going to right click on those cells and delete them and I want to make sure that I move them up so it'll move everything up so I'm going to move them up and so there that is so that looks good so now again if you were to make this argument if you had like a you know if you're trying to look at it objectively or if you're trying to talk to someone who's trying to convince you one way or the other what should be done with time value of money they might say you know the most straightforward calculation would be well if you save 255 for 10 years then you'd be you'd be saving 2550 that's pretty good or they might take it a step further and say well what if you put that 2055 into a savings account and you earn seven percent or more or so on and notice i can adjust this on the left hand side i could say well what if it was eight percent what if it was nine percent that's why we have this on data on the left hand side if you did that back to seven we would be at the 3523 and then if you were on the pessimistic side of things you might be saying hey look you're not you're not even going to be <laughs> To be saving that you're not going to put it into the stocks and bonds and earning seven percent you're probably going to spend it so we should be discounting with the seven percent maybe so not only would we not have the 255 2550 because that's future value of money we would actually have if i discount it back at seven percent 1791 or 
you could say, well, at least I'll discount it back at inflation rates or something like that, 3.5%, which would be the 2,121. And then let's do one more calculation just to practice our time value of money to break down this annuity into a series of present value of one calculations. So I'm gonna take this skinny column right here, home tab, taking that skinny, I'm gonna put that over here, and I'm gonna say this is gonna be the year, and this is going to be the savings, and this is going to be the present value on the savings per year. Let's make this black and white, home tab, font group, making that black and white. Let's center it, do some centerization, making this one a little bit smaller, and then we'll do the same thing here, one, two, three. I'm gonna select those three, put my cursor on the fill handle and drag it on down to 10. And now I'm just gonna put my savings, which I didn't spell right, saving, I-N-G-S, and I'm gonna say that that's gonna be equal to the 255. I'll just copy that down, that's gonna be the same. But then I'm gonna do my, my uh, present value Calcul or let's say this is, I'm sorry, this is gonna be the future value calculations here. So this 255 that I had at the end, we're saying of year one, is gonna be there for nine years after that. So I'm gonna do a future value of one calculation, sum them all up, and I should get to the same number as we got here, just to see this calculation another way to see the annuities versus the values of one. So this is gonna be negative future value, let's say brackets. The rate is gonna be over here. We have that 7% still on the rate, comma. And then I'm gonna say that this is gonna be the number of periods. Now this is where it's a little tricky because I'm gonna have this for nine years because this happened at the end of year one, we're gonna say. I, I don't wanna hard code nine because I wanna copy it down. So the tricky little thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 10 down here minus the this number which will give us nine but i'm going to make this first one absolute because when i copy it down i don't want that 10 to move but i do want that one to move so i'm going to say f4 on the keyboard making that absolute and then comma and then the the payment amount is not what we're going to use because this is not an annuity but a present value i mean future value of one so comma we're going to take the present value which is that 255 and enter so there we have it. And so then I can do that again down here. I'll do it one more time and then I'll adjust this one to copy it down. Negative future value, shift nine, rate is all the way to the left is gonna be that 7% comma. And then we're gonna say that we have the number of periods, which once again is now, this is at the end of period two, which would be eight, 10 minus two. But I'm gonna do it this way, which is going to be this and then i would say f4 so that one doesn't move when i copy it down minus two which would be eight and then comma no payment because we're not talking about an annuity double comma or you could put a zero and a comma and the present value is 255 and enter so there we have the next one and we're going to do that series down i'm going to delete the second one now and then we'll double click on this first one and i'm going <clears> to <throat> adjust it so we can copy it down this first B12 is that interest, which is over here somewhere. It's outside of the table we're working in. Therefore, I don't want it to move. So I'm gonna select F4, making a dollar sign before the B and the 12. This represents that 10, which I don't want to move when I copy it down. This represents that one, which I do want to move. Therefore, it's not absolute. Note that you only need mixed references, but absolutes work. And this one represents that 255, and I do want it to move down, no absolutes for it, therefore. Putting my cursor on this number, double click in the fill handle, which I call the fill button, because it's just working like a button right there. And this is gonna be the total, and we'll sum this up. So we can now sum up the savings, so we can see the savings calculation again with no time value calculation, which obviously equals that number. And then I can copy that over using the fill handle and dragging that to the right. And so there's our calculation of the 3523 with a series of, of future value of one, which is gonna be the same as the annuity calculation we got over here, just to practice our time value of money uh, concept. So we're gonna go up top, home tab, font group. Let's put some brackets around it. Let's make it blue. Let's put our cursor off that. Let's do some spelling. Did you spell? stuff right years you can't even spell years idiot 
it's okay. That's I just wanted to give spell check something to do. So we've got that. Okay. So there it is.